Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back from the break. I hope you I hope you were able to enjoy a little bit of the longer break. So what we have on the agenda was a talk from Dr. John Navambra, who was going, who's a member of the NASM committee, and he was going to give us a brief intro on the framework um, from the NASM report um, with a lens of legacy data. And what we had hoped was he would was gonna set the stage to be able to give us a brief intro as um, in order for us to be ready for the breakout group. Jen Wojcik has kindly agreed to step in. Um, John was unfortunately um, held back. He's going to join us a little bit later, but Jen, who's also a member of the NASM committee, is going to give us that brief intro. So thank you, Jen, for stepping in. And with that, I will let you take the floor. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, just a mad scramble to make myself uh, presentable. Um, okay. Let me just share the screen. Okay, can you see it now? Great, okay. Uh, so I have a few minutes here to um, oops, discuss you. This is from the slides yesterday and to introduce to you the different um, use cases. And so uh, as I stated sort of yesterday, um, there was it was very apparent early on that there was no one size fits all solution. And because of this, discussions had to be more focused as to what the specific use cases were. And for this, um, they were divided up into loosely five categories that could be split further into these seven categories you see on the right-hand side, with the idea being that you would need to um, decide for your specific use case uh, what decisions had to be made at sort of every step of the process. And, and that includes sort of at the beginning as to whether or not descriptors had to be used at all uh, as it, it was relevant to the study of interest. Uh, and so again, you know, the, the common threads throughout these use cases and these sort of different types of genomic studies as um, described in the report um, was that again, a report researchers should be transparent and report decisions about the descriptors and the group labels. And that you know you should respect the consent practices and, and, and the community from which you're you know, using the data. And just, just interrogate, you know, as was said earlier today in my talk before, and and Pete talked earlier today, and sort of and and every everyone really just to see whether you need them. So so the types of that were split up into the five main categories were gene discovery, and that sort of falls under GWAS, some um, any kind of association testing there. Um, and then trait prediction. So that's not limited to, but can include polygenic scores, um, any kind of uh, testing, which could be Mendelian or complex. And this is where it was split up into these two different categories. Um, and then beyond those sort of very um, sort of large scale focus studies, uh, you have cellular and physiological mechanisms and then you have health disparities. And this is sort of trying to explain the difference between any two groups as defined by any kind of axis of difference. And then lastly, human evolutionary history. And so uh, there is this table in the report for people to refer to. Um, and the way that we read this table is that all these different study types are shown on the, the y-axis here, you could say, sort of long format. And then a select number of the descriptors are looking at the columns. And within each sort of cross-section, you see whether it should not be used, which is sort of the red dashed line, um, whether in some cases this could be used, but it should be with certain considerations. And then also uh, sort of also a sort of a yellow light kind of situation here with the E is that descriptors could be used appropriately for proxies for environmental and not genetics effects. That could also be appropriate, right? But it depends again on the strength of that proxy and what you're looking at. Uh, and so, and then you have, of course, the preferred population descriptors. And I think what's sort of really important to note here is that it really depends on your question and what you're really trying to get at at your core, right? And so, for example, um, you know, GWAS would fit into the gene discovery complex traits often um, category. And for this, what you really are trying to either control for or leverage is genetic similarity because you want to sort of account for allele frequencies or LD. 
And therefore, that's sort of the script route that would be used. And so there's sort of these strong recommendations against the use of race uh, because it is, you know, a, a social construct that's not valid for genetic differences. Um, but there's other aspects that might be appropriate. And so it goes, you know, forth all these different um, use cases. And I think that's what the discussion will be today. I don't really have a full 10 minutes to talk about it, but just to sort of reiterate that there are nuances and it should be reminded, I think, when the discussion and this sort of central to these points is that it depends on your question, right? And it depends on what you're actually trying to get at and to get as close to the um, construct or the variable or the factor that you're actually, the process that you're trying to interrogate as possible and to not rely on proxies that can be quite poor in some cases um, for this. And again, you know, to know that there is a difference between genetic ancestry and genetic similarity. Um, and so there's sort of this, within this table, you sort of see how they're distinguished uh, between them and why it's for some studies versus others. And I think that's all I have for the the broad use cases. I don't know if Jonah, Jonah, if there's anything else you wanted me to touch upon or expand upon before. Otherwise, I guess it's five extra minutes for discussion. Okay. That's great. Thank you, Jen, so much for stepping in. Uh, this is great. It's a great intro to the different use cases. I will go ahead and share my screen so I can speak a little bit again about um, the breakout groups and... Let's see. So Jen just talked about uh, breakout groups. I did want to note that we added uh, one breakout group here called the, the last one, clinical and diagnostic. And so the, the, the report itself did not outline this as a particular use case because it had a broader um, remit. But since we've recognized that I'm in conversations with many of you and with other consortia that this is also um, a particular use case that is still um, and also struggling with the issue of population descriptors and legacy data. So this, these are the seven breakout groups that we have. And please, hopefully you have already considered which one is the one you're interested in. And again, talk about how we will do this. So find the controls, they should be at the bottom. That's where you can um, see the Q&A and where you can mute and unmute yourself. Um, in that control panel, at the moment, you don't have the breakout uh, group icon, but when we're ready, uh, Jacob is going to deploy that. So you will see the icon pop up. And when that happens, you can click on join a breakout group and that will trigger the list of all the breakout groups that are available to you. There are seven total that you see here. Find the one that you're interested in, click on join, and that will trigger another box that says, um, are you sure, basically? So you get to confirm your choice and that will take you to the breakout group. At that point, um, we hope you have a really good discussion. Again, the, the, the moderators and um, there are note takers and moderators for each group, and they should have um, some key guiding questions for you to consider together. Um, when five minutes before your time ends, we will have um, a reminder that you have five, five minutes and it's an opportunity to wrap up and write your recommendations. And then we'll come back together to discuss the recommendations as a large group and to engage in a little bit more of discussion. So with that, I, Jacob, whenever you're ready, um, we can go ahead and um, establish or set up the, the breakout rooms.